Hola amigos, you're listening to the English Made Simple Show. This is episode number 94, numero 94. Hello there amigos y amigas. Welcome to the English Made Simple Show. My name is Milena from EnglishMadeSimple.net. What's shaking amigos? How's it? How the bloody hell are ya? Sorry, that was my bad attempt at uh, Australian accent. How the bloody hell are ya? It was a slogan displayed on the advertising boards everywhere in New Zealand when I was living there in the early 2000s. Advertising Australian tourism as part of their Visit Australia campaign. I remember it brought up a bit of controversy at the time, but you know what? We are not... 100% proper on this show anyway, so we can start using it whenever we want. We can start using this greeting anytime we want. How the bloody hell are ya? Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you survived the last episode when we learned about the tongue twisters or trabalenguas in Spanish. In fact, I was practicing a Spanish one. I was practicing a Spanish tongue twister to test my pronunciation of Spanish. Uh, I've got it written down here because it's easier when I read it. So here it goes. Pablito clavó un clavito. ¿Qué clavito clavó Pablito? Pablito clavó un clavito. ¿Qué clavito clavó Pablito? <laughs> well done to all of you who attempted to practice the tongue twisters that I shared with you in the last episode. I hope it helped you become more aware of your pronunciation. Well, that was the point of that exercise anyway. Cool bananas. Alrighty. And now we will continue with the show. But firstly, let's send a couple of greetings to some special listeners out there who took their time to email me and message me and share their stories with me. Hola to Tassio Alvao from Brazil, who currently lives in London, uh, who started uh, listening to the show recently, and he's enjoying it so far. Thank you so much, Tassio. I'm glad to hear that you're enjoying the show. So, from sunny Brazil to gloomy London, it's a big change for Tassio, I can imagine. Thanks for your nice comments, and also keep listening to the English Made Simple show. And one more raving fan from Mexico called Saul who also stumbled upon the English Made Simple show and who now can't get enough of it. Welcome, Saul. Nice to have you on board and thanks again for your nice comments. Hello to all of you guys who took their time to write in the Facebook group. I really appreciate your comments. I'm super excited to have you join the group. Awesome. So now let's rock and roll, amigos. Today we are going to demystify this English language once and for all. I still want to talk about the English pronunciation because it's just, you know, it's really fun. I love it. Love it. No, I don't. But anyway, here we go. Let's start. Can you tell a difference between the following words? Ship and sheep. Shit and sheet. Live and leave. Hmm, what's another combination of uh, words that sound very similar but are spelled differently? Hmm, oh, that's right. Beach and bitch. These are same sounding words um, and they're called homophones. So we have ship and and sheep. Ship in Spanish is embarcación or un barco or nave. Um, a spaceship is nave espacial in Spanish. A spaceship. So we don't say spaceship. There are no sheep in the space. Sheep with a long E sound means oveja in Spanish. This is a domesticated animal that uh, lives on the farm and eats grass and has a thick woolly coat. You can make sweaters, scarves, uh, bufandas, blankets or frazadas from its wool. The word wool is lana in Spanish. That's like a fabric. 
which you can use to make sweaters from. Hey guys, uh, what's plural for sheep? Do you know? It's not sheeps. It's sheep. The same word, sheep. There are many sheep in the field. There are no sheep in the space. Sheep don't travel. No hay ovejas en el espacio. Uh, for example, let me use another example. The Death Star from Star Wars is a name given to the spaceship that belongs to Darth Vader. It's an example for you Star Wars fanaticos, enthusiasts. Remember, there are no sheep in Star Wars, okay? But the plural for ship is ships. Ship spelled as S-H-I-P. You can say ships in plural. There are many ships out at the sea. Another example could be the Romans built a fleet of 300 ships. Aha! New word for you amigos. Fleet. F-L-E-E-T. Fleet. According to Weon Inteligente or the online dictionary, fleet means a group of vessels or a group of ships. In Spanish, this is flota, flota de naves. Uh, this is a naval fleet. Okie dokie, cool bananas, you're following me so far? Awesome, let's continue. The next word that I would like to bring to your attention, the next word that has different spelling, but uh, when pronounced, it kind of sounds the same, is um, sheet and shit. Mm-hmm. You have to be careful with this one, okay? If you say it with a short E sound, that would just mean mierda, okay? In Spanish, shit. Oh, shit, I left my keys at home. Oh, shit. I use this word every day, okay? <laughs> it's not too bad when you say it in English. It's not that bad. It's not a bad swear word. But still, you have to be careful of the way you pronounce uh, these two words. In fact, I hear the word shit being used in the workplaces. My manager used to say it when he was angry about something. He would say, oh, this project is shit. We will never be able to complete it on time. And the other word I mentioned that sounded similar was sheet. Longer E sound, sheet, spelled as S-H-E-E-T. A sheet of paper, hoja de papel in Spanish. Synonyms for sheet of paper are piece of paper or a page. Another example I can give you, bed sheets. We sleep on the bed sheets. Savanas, bed sheets. I've recently started uh, to use Google Docs and inside Google Docs is something called Google Sheets which is similar to Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Excel calls it Spreadsheets. Yep, I hope I'm making sense. And enough about this shit, let's uh, move on to the next. Next fun uh, combination is beach and bitch. The two words that uh, easily get mispronounced by English learners but have completely different meanings. So what does beach mean? To go to the beach. Ir a la playa. Beach in this case is pronounced with a long e. Beach. B-E-A-C-H. For example, in Sydney, Australia, Bondi Beach is quite famous among tourists. You can go swimming or surfing on Bondi Beach and it's not too far away from the city. Right, that's the word beach. Right, the other word that sounds similar is bitch, pronounced with a short sounding E, bitch. And it means a female dog, in Spanish, perra. That's a formal meaning, okay? <laughs> Female dog. However, this word is quite often used informally. And it's also used as a verb. 
informally, okay, as slang. It can be used as a noun to offend someone. You can call someone a bitch, but uh, you can also use it to describe a difficult or an unpleasant experience as well. For example, wow, working long hours is a real bitch. It's not fun. Okay, so in most cases, you would use this word in an informal way. When used as a verb, it means to make critical comments, to complain or to whine about something. To bitch about something or someone is to complain about something or someone. And here we go. Just now I mentioned the word whine. New word, amigos. To whine. Spelled as W-H-I-N-E. E. It sounds the same as wine. Wine is my favorite drink of choice next to water. Wine or vino in Spanish is an alcoholic beverage made of grapes or uvas. I call it grape juice. Right, to wine means to complain. Quejarse, to wine. Alrighty? Cool. Do you know the difference between to live and to leave? To live. Vivir uh, in Spanish. Where do you live? I live in Melbourne. It's a short sounding E. Where do you live? And uh, the other word to leave means dejar or irse. It has a longer sounding E sound. For example, leave me alone. Déjame sola. Andate. Leave me alone. Every day I leave work at 5 p.m. I finish work at 5. Okie dokie. And then now the grand finale. This is going to be fun. Listen to this. Three words that sound very similar to one another. Peace and peace and peace. A piece of paper means a sheet of paper or a page. In Spanish, hojas de papel. This word peace is spelled as P-I-E-C-E. -E. In Spanish, pedazo o trozo. A piece of cake. Un pedazo de queque. A piece of cake. This morning I broke my favorite coffee cup into many pieces. What can I say? I'm very clumsy. Torpe. Torpe is clumsy. And... Uh, Peace, spelled as P-E-A-C-E, -E, means tranquility. No war, no fighting, just peace. A peaceful place, for example. A peaceful place. Both of these words are pronounced the same with a long E sound. Peace and peace. So what about the third word? Peace. Peace, P-I-S-S. Peace. Can be a noun and, um, and a verb as well. Piss. To take a piss. Go to the loo and take a piss. To pee or to urinate. In Australian slang, this uh, means... The word piss means alcoholic beverage. In Australia, when someone is pissed, means they are very drunk. They had too much to drink. Wow, you're pissed, man. So, here we are, amigos. There are more words in English that sound the same but are spelled differently. That's what makes English so much fun, right? Yeah, fun. My advice to you is to keep practicing. Take things slowly, step by step, poco a poco. And slowly but surely you will start pronouncing words correctly. Be persistent. And then, one day soon, people will stop and ask you, Wow, that's an interesting accent you have. Where are you from? Thanks for joining me today, amigos. It's been a pleasure. If you have enjoyed today's show, please share it with your friends. You've been jamming with me, Lena, from English Made Simple. I'll catch you next time. Peace out. Peace out. It's slang for goodbye. Ready? Hasta la próxima.